Welcome to Trail Talk. Uh, this is leg number 20. You might remember that we left off last time at Skyland Resort and the end of my through hike. Um, talked to my doctor and uh, he thought I had colon cancer based upon some of the symptoms I was having and recommended I come home. So, um, really nice lady from uh, um, the uh, open arms of the edge of town hostel there in Lorraine. She came up and picked me up and uh, I stayed there at her place until my daughter could come up and get me and, and take me back down to Florida. That was a good, kind of a heartbreaking moment, but you know, when you have something medical going on, it makes it a little bit easier on you psychologically than if you're just giving up. So for me, it was a, a medical event. So we are starting out now 2017 and the AWOL guide that I'm now using is a 17, uh, 2017 version. So I think I got off at 391.0 uh, something. And I think, well, it has to be 0.7 because they added a 0.6 somewhere to the trail before now. So this this number this this number went up by 0.6 for 2017, and the trail got a little longer. I never have bothered to go back and to see where it was actually added in at. So, um, but anyway, so I, I started out, and uh, so um, we got um, uh, had my friend. I walk, I walk, actually, I-W-O-X. Um, I met her um, prior to Rowan Mountain and went down into the overland, over over mountain uh, sh uh, um, shelter together and then into Harbor Mountain and then saw her again uh, just past Jennings Creek and uh, kept in contact with her and uh, asked her, she lives there in, in the Waynesboro area and I asked her if she would, would uh, um, take us up to... Uh, up to uh, Skyland Resort. So we went up, we stayed the night with her and she put us up and fed us dinner and fed us breakfast and and uh, then took us up to, to Skyland. And so Jesse and I, uh, we began our hike that way. So um, you might notice here that uh, I, I planned, uh, it probably doesn't require uh, five days worth of food, but Jesse and I were starting out brand new hikers again, you know, having, having had, had hiked for a season. And being flatlanders so we only planned like six to eight miles for the most part um, although there was one longer leg that we couldn't avoid uh, which about killed us but we, we started out um, going a little bit slower once again because we just just one of those smart things to do so um, anyway um, let me show let me show you a picture of uh, of I walks here and my friend Jesse Okay, so, so last year, 2016, uh, I had my first fall on uh, coming down a Sassafras Mountain on some, some ice and some rocks. Well, it didn't take long. We had, we had just started, and we had decided that we would go take this trail up to um, Stony Man Summit. So we were up here at the summit, and we were going to gonna, gonna, uh, take our picture here. So it's not, uh, we're only, we're only uh, what, point... Point six down the road, and uh, we climbed up. We climbed up the summit and uh, took some pictures. And ironically, uh, when you look down from there, you can see the Skyland Resort, uh, the the uh, kind of the cabins. I call them cabins, but they're not really cabins. Um, anyway, that's where my wife and I honeymooned in 1980. So it was kind of neat to kind of look down upon those, knowing that we were out on the balcony as newlyweds, looking up at those mountains and looking up at the uh, the Stony Man Summit there. So that was kind of a, a cool nostalgia. And as I started to um, um, head back, I'll show you a picture of me sitting on the summit, but as we started, to, as I started to move off the summit, a combination of having brand new boots that were a little stiff, losing my balance uh, due to a gust of wind that hit me, I started to fall. And uh, I reached down to try and, and grab uh, a handhold and realized that it wasn't going to keep me from 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 falling off, and so I, I purposely went ahead instead of fighting it. I just picked my spot and I purposely fell. And uh, now the picture I'm going to show you here will show you where I landed. Now, granted, you know I, I kind of hammed it up for Jesse a little bit, but that's actually where I ended up well, landing, kind of kind of head down on my back, and you can see how close I came to probably uh, knocking my skull open here.
Okay, so uh, so yeah, yeah, I had my fall 0.6 into my hike. Start in the in the second iteration there. Um, okay, continue to continue to hike north. Um, the goal was to get to uh, bird's nest number three, and um, I think if I remember right, let's see here, six. And bird's nest number three was my plan stop in uh, in uh, 2016. So we ended up we ended up stopping here. Now what's important to note. Unless you want to walk a, a 0.8 round robin, even though it's on a Forest Service road, to get water, get it. Go ahead and get it here from the faucet up here at this parking lot, the parking lot in the kind of a picnic area. Okay, even even one April, those those pumps were on. Go ahead and get your water here, so you've got plenty plenty for that uh, that evening here. Um, this night it was it was a relatively cool night, very windy if I remember right up here. You kind of you're kind of up a little bit. Little, well, you're down from the high point, but you're still up here pretty high on kind of a ridge. The shelter itself faced west, and that's the direction the wind was coming from, so the shelter was not uh, an option. Although it was kind of a cool shelter, it had a, a fireplace inside the shelter. And there were some guys that had put a tarp up, and they were trying to make it work. There were some weekenders who uh, brought some steaks up with them and were trying to, trying to, trying to make it a cool event. Okay, that, that next day, as you, as you start down... Um, this is, this is the, the main road to get into Luray. This is where I would have gotten picked up, um, last year, um, to go into town to do the resupply. Okay. So this is, this is your normal pickup point for the resupply. Um, and then of course you've, you've got the option of going into resupply and then just coming back out and hiking up to the, the past mountain hut here. Okay, so if you don't want to have to spend some time into town, you can go in, resupply, come back out, and then uh, and have a place to to stay. Okay, so you don't you don't have to spend money in Luray if you don't if you don't want to. Um, <clears throat> this next leg for us, we ended up uh, stealth camping here at four at nine forty seven point four. And how do I know is is precisely that? Because now I am using the Gut Hook app where it'll, it'll tell you precisely where you are in mileage along the trail. And you might notice I also have a note here to, to call the cabin home, which is a hostel in Front Royal. And this is not spelled incorrectly. This, this cabin actually does have two B's in it. It's a historical thing from, uh, from uh, when it was used as, uh, I think, some, a slave's quarters on a plantation at one time. So anyway, that, uh, so that's a historical spelling of that uh, particular word. Um, let's see what I want to show you is what, what the, uh, what the gut hook snaps. You can take a, you can take a, a screenshot of the gut, of the gut hook location. And this happens to be on, on the, on the, on the elevation look. When you're looking at for the, when you're looking at the, the, the trail version of it, it's got a little, a little arrow like you have in your car to show for your navigation. When you're looking at the, the elevation profile, it puts this little blue pepper on there and uh, and let and that's and that's the location we were at and that's the screenshot I took that I could then send to the family and say hey we're stealth camping and this is where we're at and I want to let you take a look at, at that and see what it looks like. Okay, so from the stealth camping uh, that next day we made a call. I made reservations down at the uh, the hostel to stay. And um, coming down to the stream here was where I met my first northbound hiker. Kansas was his name. And uh, kind of found out he and Early Riser were kind of leapfrogging pretty much all the way up the trail. And uh, <clears throat> matter of fact, I think uh, I, I just missed meeting Early Riser in Front Royal. Uh, his, his wife had come in and they had done some hiking in the, in the park here. And uh, I just missed them the morning that I left. Uh, this this wayside here was not open yet, even though it says early April, uh, the third of April. They were not open, nor, nor were there any vending in the vending machines. So it was it was kind of a little bit of a disappointment there. But the one, something to consider if you're hiking in the park this early, doing your flip flop northbound, uh, or even even southbound from from Harpers Ferry coming down. Those waysides may not be open yet. Um, there is camping if you decide to to make the walk if you need to, but honestly, there's just on the other side of the sheet of paper here, 
is Rock Springs Hut, and that's where uh, we ended up going in and staying the night. And if I remember right, there's water just as you come in. Yeah, spring is in route to the shelter. It's literally you, you cross over it. Matter of fact, in the photograph, I'm going to show you the Rock Springs Hut. And this is kind of very typical of what the huts looked like in the Shenandoahs. Um, not a big overhang. You know, most of the most of the time the Picnic tables are, are kind of out and exposed. Uh, if it's raining, you're not going to be able to get much of a protection to them there. But uh, you'll, you'll see the, a little um, kind of a stonework that kind of cuts across the path. And that was actually the stream, if I remember right. Now, there is one thing I want to point out about hiking in the park. <clears throat> if you're starting out on a, on a through hike, it's very forgiving. Um, you'll notice that, um, like here from Gravel Springs Hut, here you come really close to Skyline Drive at 17.7 mile marker. Here again at the 15.9 mile marker, here at the 14.2 mile marker, here at the 12.3, here at the 10.4. So, you know, all along really the Shenandoah Park, you, you unfortunately you kind of hear the road out there. So you have road noise as you're walking through the Shenandoahs. That's the bad thing. But the good thing is, because of the road there, you get a lot of views, especially the turnouts. And if you get in trouble, it's easy to get out of trouble. Okay? You can just, you can get off of it pretty easily. Um, now, um, let's see. There is this, there is a, there is a hostel here. It was not open yet for us. That's why we went into the, the cabin, the cabin home mountain hostel here. Okay? And it's only, it literally is just a, a point one off of the trail so it's really easy to get to it's, it's really nice you get breakfast included with your stay uh, uh, very highly recommend a place to go to um anyway this what with this area here so you know tom floyd shelter it's a shelter so it's outside the park here's your registration station that's inside the park okay and and i want to show you a picture of the trail through here this this uh, this is probably the prettiest Appalachian Trail to actually walk on. Actually, it wasn't necessarily pretty, but it was just, it was like flat and smooth and cushiony and soft. And let me show you what, what that looked like. Okay, so as you're, as you're coming out of the park, I'm going to back up just a little bit here. Um, this is the trickiest part of the trail. You've been, you've been... Uh, walking that really nice perfect trail this whole time and and all of a sudden you come to a cliff and we were like where did the trail go so what do you do when you lose the trail you go back to your last blaze well you know sometimes if you turn around you can see a blaze and that helps you know that you're on the trail but you walk back till you find find the next blaze whether it's the last one you saw or if it's one going the other way so you get to the next blaze we turned we did we turned around and very carefully started walking back, and boom, we came up with this cliff. Well, we pulled out gut hooks, which was nice to have, and it's just like it has us going straight over this cliff. What is going on with this? Well, when you get to that point, and in the in the video of this part of the trail, there are some subscribers that came back and said, "Oh yeah, I remember that. That was really tricky." And what it is 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 you need just to kind of go up to the edge, turn right, walk along about two or three steps, kind of kneel down a little bit, and you'll see a blaze down off the side. And so you're actually going to kind of make a little right hand descending turn down the down the down the cliffs and settle right over right over the edge of them, um, and and make that descent. So it is a little tricky uh, right through here until you get down and then the shelter here was kind of nice it's got a nice great big deck out on the front of it and uh, if I remember right the camping sites were not real great although it does show tent camping I can't remember where they were at we ended up just staying in the shelter anyway that night because it was just us and <clears throat> this the two of us and uh, why not so uh, that next that next hike that next day was was very uneventful as we as we begin uh, making our way down towards um, um, towards the hostel and it's kind of neat because once you get here you cross the road you make a turn you literally hike up along the road and then there's another turn to the left that goes back up into the mountain and, and right there you just keep going straight and you walk right into mountain home cabin um, I uh, that's where my resupply was going to occur and 
Um, and also, this is where I walks. We had agreed that she'd come up and pick up Jesse and take him back down to his car. And, uh, and that worked out great. And I have a photograph of myself, and you'll see the, the, uh, the cabin actually uh, in the background of this photograph. Okay, so uh, while here at, uh, at uh, Mountain Home Cabin, uh, I met Silver Girl and uh, another, another um, flip-flopper that was heading southbound uh, by the name of uh, Teresa. She eventually uh, got the trail named Bubbles and uh, went out to dinner and got a great big hamburger and did our resupply. And, uh, and then uh, Silver Girl left the next day in the middle of a huge rainstorm and I didn't have enough guts to do that. I waited it out. So I went ahead and took a zero here instead of hiking in the rain because I really don't like hiking in the rain. Um, so anyway, and, uh, yeah, by the time I, by the time I was just coming out of Maryland, she was already past Duncannon, um, Silver Girl was in, in, the, in the Pennsylvania. So she was making some, some phenomenal time. So, and she did, she did end up summiting. So, all right, uh, I want to end this with uh, a couple of photographs of some of the uh, the uh, the spring wildflowers that were trying to uh, to come up uh, through the ground, even though the trees had not even started budding yet. So, all right, everybody, until next time, bye.